And welcome back, everyone. It's about 12.15 Eastern Standard Time, and uh, I think we'll start the webinar, so hopefully everyone can hear me okay. My name is Dr. Dave Kanashko. I'm a chiropractor. I work at Meditech. I'm the Director of Education and Training. And today's webinar is uh, entitled, From Research to Guidelines to the Bottom Line, Top 10 Reasons Why You Should Add Laser Therapy uh, to Your Practice. So I want to introduce myself uh, firstly. I, I went through some of the, um, the emails uh, of those of you that are listening in. I'm familiar with a few, but a lot of you I, I don't know. Uh, I'm a chiropractor, as I mentioned, um, and I've been practicing for well over 20 years. I have a background in molecular biology and molecular genetics from the University of Toronto. About four or five years ago, um, I uh, completely tore my gastrocnemius and my right calf playing basketball, and it became such an issue that I actually had to stop practicing for quite a while, trying to rehabilitate it. And at the time, not knowing much about laser therapy, uh, and unfortunately, uh, my other rehab uh, that I was trying wasn't, uh, wasn't working very well. So I stumbled upon Dr. Fred Kahn here at Meditech, and he started to treat my, uh, my injury. And I couldn't believe uh, the difference uh, as time went on, the healing that was going on, especially the, the scar tissue healing uh, and the chronic tendinosis that was occurring uh, at that time. So I got interested in, uh, in laser therapy because of Dr. Fred Kahn, and I started to sort of observe in the clinic. Uh, we actually run North America's largest laser therapy clinic here in Toronto. And eventually, with my background in education and teaching, I decided to work with uh, Dr. Kahn here in the clinic, as well as uh, with training and education and doing events like uh, the one today. Um, so that brings us to today's webinar. And uh, what I'd like to do is a bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, if you have any questions uh, for me, you can type them in. I'll try to get these questions at the end of the webinar. So just bear with me, uh, but please type them in. And at the end, I'll try and address those questions as best I can. Um, so if you're having difficulties with the webinar or you want to listen again, um, tomorrow or uh, certainly by the end of uh, the day tomorrow, we'll send out an email that has a link to the webinar so you can listen it, uh, to it at your own leisure, uh, as well as references uh, to some of the papers and research that I talk about today and some other information as well. So look forward to that uh, being sent to you via email uh, by the end of the week. And also, please check our website, bioflexlaser.com, for more information about uh, today's webinar, as well as other upcoming webinars and other events that uh, we'll be hosting. So let's uh, get to it. And I'm going to be discussing what I feel the top 10 reasons why you should be adding uh, low-level laser therapy to your practice. I'm going to specifically talk about the unique mechanism of action of laser therapy and why using laser therapy uh, basically allows you to treat um, a host of different types of conditions using a mechanism of action that's very different than manual therapy or other types of modalities. I'll also talk about clinical indications of laser therapy and because of its mechanism, why you actually have a, such a broad range of injuries and uh, disorders that you can treat with laser therapy. I'll talk a bit about its safety profile, specifically the fact that low-level laser therapy is an extremely safe type of therapy to add to your practice and essentially won't cause any potential harm to your client, um, to your patients, if properly used. I'll talk a bit about the research um, and the uh, actual huge amount of research in this field, as well as evidence-based guidelines that are indicating now that one should use laser therapy for a lot of different types of conditions. I'll talk about the analgesic effects of laser therapy, how you can induce uh, pain control by using laser therapy, and talk a bit about the hands-free capability of Bioflex laser therapy and why that's so important uh, with respect to running a clinical practice and laser therapy. And lastly, 8, 9, and 10, with respect to return on investment, expanding your practice and clinical efficacy, I'm going to be joined by um, our Bioflex user and friend, Dr. Blair, or, I'm sorry, Dr. Uh, Nick Bear Patel, a chiropractor uh, in Pembroke, Ontario, and we'll have a live discussion with him and talking about those specific uh, topics. Okay, well, let's talk a bit about mechanism of action. And the interesting thing about low-level laser therapy is it has a very unique mechanism of action. First, let's understand the definition of laser therapy, because I know that some of you out there are new to this field, uh, perhaps. By definition, it's also known as photobiomodulation. It uses light energy in the form of photons, and specifically either from low-level laser diodes, 
um, which have to be under 500 milliwatts in total power, um, and or the combination of LED diodes or superluminous diodes, and together these will elicit a cellular and biological response in the body as a result of a very specific photochemical reaction. Okay, so that's the definition. So what does actually laser therapy do? Well, first of all, we need to understand that if you look at this diagram here, what you're seeing is a schematic diagram of light of a very specific wavelength, um, usually used in the 600 to 900 nanometer wavelength, and this is entering into the cells and the tissues of the body. It has to be absorbed specifically in the mitochondria of the cells that you're targeting. By doing this, it actually has a photochemical reaction that stimulates and increases the levels of ATP within the cell. And this is one of the chief known mechanisms of how laser therapy works fundamentally to stimulate cells and tissues to heal faster. It's very unique amongst uh, any other type of therapy, whether that's manual therapy or other electrotherapies or acupuncture or what have you. This mechanism is very unique and is actually only known to be um, induced by low-level laser therapy. So we now we've increased ATP in the cell. What does this mean? Well, we know that ATP plays a role in energy metabolism and intracellular signaling such that it will induce cell proliferation. So for example, it will stimulate fibroblasts, osteocytes, chondrocytes, and other cells to increase what they're actually um, so, supposed to be doing. For example, um, secreting collagen, repairing cartilage, repairing bone damage. Okay, we also know that ATP will have a role with respect to inflammatory mediators, specifically macrophages, lymphocytes, and neutrophils. So by stimulating white blood cells with light of this wavelength, you're actually stimulating these white blood cells to enhance uh, chemical mediators, specifically anti-inflammatory mediators, that will have a role to play in the reduction of inflammation and edema. So you can see the key here is to facilitate the increased ATP that we know is lowered during an injury or an inflammatory process. So what are the actual effects of laser therapy on cells and tissue types? Well, it has a, a variety of effects, everything from increasing circulation by increasing angiogenesis and neovascularization. It does this specifically by increasing the uh, stimulation of endothelial cells that form new blood vessels. It actually has an impact on collagen production, and talk a bit more about that uh, later as the webinar progresses. And it has a role to play in muscle regeneration and muscle atrophy. Again, I'll talk a bit more specifically about this um, as, the, uh, as the afternoon progresses. It also has a role to play, as I mentioned, about, uh, with respect to inflammation and edema and having an impact on increasing nerve regeneration, cartilage production, and bone formation. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's move on to the next reason uh, why you should be adding laser therapy, and that is laser therapy has an ability to treat all sorts of different types of clinical indications. So let's talk a bit, a bit more about those. For example, it has a huge role to play in treating muscle strains. So, for example, when you're looking at a muscle tear, we know that as a manual therapist, whether you're a massage therapist, a chiropractor, physiotherapist, uh, part of what we're trying to do is work directly on the tissue. However, laser therapy works indirectly. It will stimulate satellite cells or myosatellite cells, um, and as these are stimulated, it actually helps the repair process of um, damaged muscle tissue such that you actually improve uh, the number of satellite cells and increase the ability of muscle fibers to repair themselves and to replicate. This is well known and if you care to see the research uh, I would be more than happy to send that out to you. It can also treat tendinopathies and ligament sprains. Specifically it has a, a huge role to play in collagen formation. We know that the repair of tendon issues, uh, very similar to the kind of injury that I had, is that as you get into chronic uh, tendinosis conditions or even acute uh, tendinitis conditions, the repair process induces a lot of type 3 or very um, weak type of, co of collagen. And what we're actually trying to do is stimulate type 1 collagen to repair. We know that laser therapy increases the percentage of type 1 collagen over type 3 collagen. 
So by increasing the levels of type 3, of type 1 collagen, you can actually improve the integrity of the tissue that you're treating, specifically sprains, ligaments, and tendons. So by adding laser therapy, you can actually in improve the overall integrity of the tissue that you're treating. You can treat uh, a variety of inflammatory conditions, everything from osteoarthritis to rheumatoid arthritis to uh, bursitis conditions, uh, whether that's in the knee as shown here or other areas of the body at the elbow or the hip. And you can treat other uh, inflammatory conditions like sinusitis. Wherever there's inflammation of a joint cavity or synovial membrane, uh, light therapy and laser therapy is uh, known to be able to reduce the uh, inflammation of the synovial lining and help to repair some of the damage that's been going on. Laser therapy is also useful for treating neurological conditions. Uh, that could be, for example, uh, compression of nerves via disc herniations or sciatica type of scenarios. Uh, to a compression a distally, say a, a carpal tunnel, um, and uh, even on, uh, for example, trigeminal neuralgia and other areas of the body that have compression of the nerves, uh, to other conditions like concussions. And we're also doing uh, some work with other more advanced uh, central nervous system types of conditions that hopefully with time uh, we'll be able to uh, develop some uh, uh, protocols and get them approved by Health Canada. So. Laser therapy has a unique effect on nerve cells by simulating the ability of these nerve fibers, especially the Schwann cells, to help repair uh, damaged and compressed nerves. We know that laser therapy is also effective for fractures. So, for example, if a patient comes in to me with a tibial stress fracture, perhaps a dancer's fracture in their foot, um, or even a compression fracture of the spine, um, as a chiropractor, these are essentially are contraindicated for direct um, manipulation, and it's really not a whole lot I can address directly on that tissue. Laser therapy is a non-invasive way of actually stimulating the osteocytes, osteoclasts, and osteoblasts uh, to actually repair this damaged uh, osseous tissue um, in a very uh, um, fundamental and cellular way. There are quite a few dental applications. For example, uh, postmolar extraction, one can treat the pain and the swelling and the edema. Um, you can treat temporomandibular disorders in and around the disc uh, and the muscles surrounding the jaw. You can treat orthodontic pain or post-orthodontic pain as well too. So again, many applications for a dentist as well. We use a lot of laser therapy here in the clinic, Dr. Fred Kahn being a uh, physician, and treats uh, quite a wide variety of dermatological conditions as well. For example, dermatitis, um, psoriasis, and uh, herpes uh, zoster uh, as well. Uh, it's known to help the inflammation and the healing process for these types of conditions. We do a lot of wound healing here as well. We actually have a dedicated wound room. Dr. Slava Kim, our, our clinic director, is uh, uh, head of this department, uh, works along with Dr. Fred Kahn uh, to treat things like post-surgical incisions that you see here, uh, as well as other uh, ulcers and wounds secondary, typically to um, poor circulation, uh, to, for example, for diabetes or other circulatory uh, insufficiencies. And many other conditions, uh, actually so many that it's hard to go over them all specifically, but for example, in the uh, podiatry world or chiropathy world, things like plantar fasciitis, Morton's neuroma, metatarsalgia, and gout, for example. And we have specifically designed uh, protocols and equipment for treating veterinary applications in dogs, cats, and equines, uh, horses, for, um, as well as other animals. You can also use uh, specifically the laser diode uh, to stimulate acupuncture points. There's an actual whole field of laser acupuncture out there. Um, and this, of course, has great advantages. I myself am trained in acupuncture, and I know that in my experience is that there are quite a few patients that are needle phobic, uh, sometimes contraindicated for direct needling, and you can actually stimulate the acupuncture site by using the appropriate um, type of laser probe and wavelength uh, to do this as well. And other conditions, for example, lymphedema, fibromyalgia, uh, direct treatment of trigger points, uh, things like reflex sympathetic dystrophy, and so on and so forth. So, so you can see this just barely touches the surface of the types of conditions that laser therapy can actually treat. So another 
key reason why you should add laser therapy to your practice is it's a type of therapy that is extremely safe. Now, when you think about lasers, you start to conjure all sorts of different types of potential dangers. I mean, you know, for high-powered lasers, for example, you're thinking about burning tissues and, and that kind of thing. And, of course, there are specific safety issues that we need to be concerned about. Um, but for low-level laser therapy, it really is uh, addressed around the eye. So if the eye is protected when using a laser diode, then the safety is really not an issue. Because of the light that we use for the laser diodes are under 500 milliwatts, they don't pose a thermal uh, potential to damage the skin and are very safe so that you can use them without worrying about actually damaging any of the tissue that you're treating. As far as cont contraindications go, there's very few. Uh, this information is taken from um, uh, electrophysical therapy agents. You can see the reference right here below. Uh, and this is according to Physiotherapy Canada. So I won't go through all of the, these specifically. You can read them at your leisure when I send you out this, um, uh, this webinar. But you can see that there's very few specific contraindications for laser therapy. As far as precautions, there are a few, but again, um, Compared to other types of electrophysical uh, modalities or other modalities, uh, there's actually quite a few less uh, precautions and contraindications. And as far as it being safe to use on, uh, basically all those other types of conditions and tissues that I've mentioned, uh, you can safely treat. Okay, now the rest of this information, the next few slides, there's a lot of information here. Uh, don't feel that you have to, you know, <laughs> look at all of it right now. But what I wanted to do specifically is point out um, how laser therapy compares to other modalities like ultrasound, electric stimulation, heat, cold, shortwave, diathermy, and so forth. And you can see whenever it has an S, that means it's safe. If you see a P for precaution, obviously there's a precaution, or a C meaning contraindication. So if you compare laser therapy with these other modalities as I click through them, you'll see that, in fact, um, the safety aspects compared to um, these other modalities is actually a much higher safety profile. So, for example, things like impaired sensation of skin or impaired circulation, completely safe to use laser therapy, whereas other types of uh, electrotherapy devices like uh, ultrasound or even um, TENS or high volt or whatever might be contraindicated or precautioned. And again, just running through, you can see that, uh, for example, uh, uh, skin conditions might be precautioned or contraindicated for other types of uh, therapeutic devices, whereas for laser, laser therapy, it's completely safe to use. Okay. And again, just a few other uh, areas you can see here, example, over regenerating nerves or around the head, you can see it's completely safe to use on the chest and over the heart. Um, for laser therapy, whereas again, if you compare that with other modalities, you can see there's quite a few other precautions and contraindications. And once again, if you want to see this entire um, paper, um, I'll be sending you the link to this uh, in an email in the next day or two. Okay, so another reason is the vast amount of research that's gone into laser therapy. We know that over the last 30 or 40 years that laser therapy is being used, um, that there's a fair amount of evidence now to suggest that it's very effective. And actually, I just want to mention, uh, Dr. Slava Kim pointed this out to me today, that one of the um, uh, co-founders of, or co-inventors, I should say, of the actual first working laser, Dr. Charles Towns, um, who uh, actually passed away today at the age of 99 years of age. Um, so he was actually one of the, the first ones for scientists to, uh, to actually develop and use a working laser. So clearly, if he lived to be 99 years old and was around lasers his whole life, I would suspect that that might be a good thing, but that's just uh, me being a little bit biased, perhaps. So let's take a look at the research. You can see here that um, the amount of research that goes on with laser therapy compared to other types of modalities like TENS or shockwave or IFC or even ultrasound uh, really pales in comparison. Specifically, if you look at from the year 2000 uh, to the year 2014 that just passed, you can see that the amount of research papers on PubMed has been increasing steadily to the point now where we typically have anywhere from three to 400 papers a year on low-level laser therapy. So if you actually want to uh, look at this information, go to PubMed, search uh, using LLLT, or low-level laser therapy, and you'll come uh, across all these different papers and abstracts uh, to review. 
I did want to mention um, some research specifically by Dr. Roberta Chow. Now, Dr. Roberta Chow is a physician and researcher from Australia, and she's a family practitioner as well. And she's been a huge advocate of using laser therapy, especially for neck pain. That's kind of her specialty uh, area. And she published a paper in The Lancet. And those of you that are familiar with The Lancet uh, know that this specific journal is read by physicians worldwide as one of the highest impact factors out of all the medical journals. Um, and to be published in The Lancet is a real coup. Um, so she did a meta-analysis. You can see that the, entitled, uh, the name of the, the paper here, Efficacy of Low-Level Laser Therapy in the Management of Neck Pain. So she did a systematic review and meta-analysis. And what I wanted to do was um, uh, ha a little, have a little video clip of her talking about her paper. We host uh, every two or three years international conferences. And a few years back, Roberta Chow um, was able to attend our conference and spoke sp specifically about this paper. Um, so just let's uh, give a listen in here. Some of you can't questions and anecdotes and people who will stand up and say that a therapy helped them. In fact, in medicine, testimonials are absolutely counterproductive and they do nothing to promote our cause at tertiary level medicine, I'm afraid to say. Um, though how much experience one has really doesn't carry much weight. And those uh, medical practitioners in the audience, I'm sure, would agree with me about that. And we can go up the hierarchy of evidence and we get to the very top, the meta-analyses. And this comes from Sackett, evidence-based medicine. So in order to reach this goal, this uh, platinum standard of evidence, so that everybody would come rushing to the door and start treating patients uh, with laser therapy for neck pain, uh, I embarked with uh, co-authors, uh, Professor Lopez Martins from Brazil, Mike Johnson from the UK, a pain specialist, and the very well-known Jan Bjordal. And it was really this um, uh, support and work that we did over more than two years working on this systematic review and meta-analysis of of low-level laser therapy in neck pain that I think has begun to penetrate slowly those, those barriers that are there in medicine. And I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what we found. So there is very strong objective evidence that laser therapy works in neck pain. There is nobody now that can, can challenge you on this. Nobody can challenge you. It's there. It's in black and white. Okay. Um, sorry about that. There was a bit of a delay there. I just uh, I clicked when I wasn't supposed to click. So um, you can hear that uh, Dr. Chow, um, you know, when she uh, sent this paper into the Lancet and they accepted it, um, you know, she had a, a, a significant amount of strong uh, evidence that laser therapy is effective for neck pain. And as a chiropractor, uh, I know when I'm treating acute neck pain, uh, there are times where I'm not able to, uh, for example, manipulate the cervical spine, or even in cases where there's instability or other contraindications, or in fact, some patients don't want their neck manipulated. I'm looking for other ways of treating neck pain that are, are effective. And uh, clearly, the evidence uh, indicates that neck pain is um, very, or sorry, that laser therapy is very effective for neck pain. So another reason why you should add laser therapy to your practice is uh, the growing level of evidence with respect to clinical guidelines. And we know that clinical guidelines essentially are documents um, that are created with the aim of guiding decisions and criteria with respect to either diagnosis, management, or treatment in specific areas of healthcare. So when these guidelines are uh, formed and dis disseminated to clinicians, we should be looking at these guidelines and perhaps be adopting some of uh, the suggestions that they, uh, that they have. So um, I'm going to just mention a few of these guidelines that have come out over the last five to six years. Um, the Bone and Joint Decade, 2000-2010, uh, 
put out guidelines for the treatment of neck pain grade 1 and grade 2. So essentially, this would be a whiplash type of scenario. And these specific types of treatments, exercises, mobilization, manipulation, uh, analgesics, acupuncture, and low-level laser therapy were the only ones that were actually recommended, not in that specific order, by the way, uh, for treatment of uh, grade 1 or grade 2 neck pain. The Ottawa panel for the evidence of uh, clinical practice guidelines for electrotherapy and thermotherapy for the management of rheumatoid arthritis in adults um, made a comment about laser therapy, and they concluded that it has anti-inflammatory and analgesic effects, can help with regional microcirculation, can help reduce exudative and infiltrative fluids, and can help regenerate damaged synovial membrane. Uh, this a uh, specific one, so I'm going to back up a bit here, uh, by the Cochrane Collaboration came out in 2014 on electrotherapy modalities for adhesive capsulitis or uh, sometimes known as frozen shoulder. And they concluded that, uh, you can see here that overall they based, uh, was based on moderate quality evidence that laser therapy probably is an effective adjunct to home exercises with respect to pain up to four weeks and function up to four months. Um, what was really interesting is that they could not conclude any positive um, uh, recommendations for any of the other electrotherapeutic modalities for frozen shoulders. So in essence, they were only recommending low-level laser, low -level laser therapy as far as modalities go. So again, if you treat this type of condition, you certainly should be adding laser therapy to your uh, treatment regime. <clears throat> Uh, the American Physical Therapy Association put out guidelines for the treatment of Achen Achilles tendinopathies, and uh, you can see on the table in front of you that the two most evidence-based forms of treatment were uh, first eccentric loading exercises followed by laser therapy uh, and also ionotrophoresis, and then you can see much weaker evidence with respect to other types of treatments, uh, including manual therapy and foot orthotics and so on and so forth. So if you're treating Achilles tendinopathies, which I'm sure many of you are out there, and you're not using laser therapy, the guidelines are suggestive that you should definitely be adding uh, this type of treatment therapy to your, uh, to your regime. The British Columbia Physiotherapy Tendinopathy Task Force uh, also had a statement with respect to um, chronic elbow tendinopathies. Again, they found very similar results to that of uh, the APTA, that is, Exercises, eccentric exercises followed by low-level laser therapy uh, were the top two most evidence-based forms of treatment for uh, these, uh, these types of conditions. So another reason to add laser therapy is, of course, uh, pain. And the purpose of any of your treatments is to reduce pain. Pain and inflammation is the enemy, and we want to reduce it as much as possible. It's interesting that from the research over the last 20 to 30 years, we know that laser therapy can actually decrease pain in inflammatory modulators. For example, substance P, bradykinins, COX-2, and prostaglandins were all reduced at the site of the treatment of laser therapy, and this, of course, will lead to less pain. We also know that laser therapy can temporarily inhibit or block uh, pain fibers, uh, for example, C fibers and A delta fibers to help with pain. Um, so by using laser therapy, you can actually have a temporary analgesic effect, which every patient is going to obviously um, uh, benefit from. One of the uh, uh, key papers that I like to show with respect to inflammation is this one, and it's entitled Biomechanical and Biochemical Protective Effect of Low-Level Laser Therapy for Achilles Tendinitis. What they did here was they induced um, tendinitis using an enzyme called collagenase in the tendons of rats. Uh, on the left is a control tendon, on the right is a tendon that was induced with collagenase. And what they did was they treated the tendinitis tendons um, using either Voltaren, which is a very common non steroidal anti-inflammatory prescribed and now is uh, available over the counter. And the results were actually pretty poor. You can see that the tendon is so swollen and inflamed uh, and actually not very well um, uh, advanced as far as uh, reduction of inflammation goes. And you can see the treatment with one joule of infrared laser light you can see that that tendon has actually almost healed completely. Now, what's interesting is if they use three joules, uh, the amount of healing and inflammation was less. Okay, so the reason why I point this out, number one, is to show how it compares to Voltaren, but also you need to understand that the dosage is critical. We know that laser therapy is dosage dependent, and you need to get the dosages correct. 
therefore, you need to use equipment that you can um, effectively use the correct dosage, whether it's specific protocols or having that knowledge to be able to uh, create the actual best um, effect, and which in this case was one joule. Okay, so another reason is a hands-free capability. Um, of, this is a little joke here. You can see wherever possible we try and do things hands-free so that we can multitask. In the clinical practice, it's very important because if you're trying to treat large surface areas like a swollen knee, uh, lymphedema, or any around an entire joint capsule, we need to be able to treat a large volume of tissue, and if we do that, say, with a, a single laser diode probe, it would take us uh, a long time to treat all of that tissue. Uh, another example might be a hamstring, uh, he, a hematoma secondary to a hamstring strain, whereas if you have hand-free capability, for example, um, using a BioFlex uh, Dual Plus Array, you can conveniently just lay it across the damaged tissue, uh, click it on, and walk away from your patient knowing that you're treating the area, you can adjust your next patient, or you can treat your next patient, or interview your next patient, and not have to worry about um, being directly over your patient or addressing your patient uh, to administer the laser therapy. For example, if you're treating synovial tissue around a knee, it's nice to be able to wrap the array around the knee um, circumferentially so you can treat the entire synovial tissue in a hands-free manner and, uh, and again, be able to treat multiple patients at the same time. Okay, what I'd like to do now is introduce um, our panel guest, and his name is Dr. Nick Bear Patel, and I'm going to bring him live in just a moment. Uh, Dr. Pat uh, Bear Patel graduated from the University of Toronto uh, back in 1984. Sounds pretty familiar. That's about when I graduated as well, uh, it, with an honors in uh, microbiology and immunology. He went to CMCC here in Toronto and graduated in 1991, and he's been the owner of uh, Integrated Health Centre in Pembroke, Ontario in the Ottawa Valley area since 1992, and he's been using laser therapy um, for about 10 years. So I'm just going to um, just uh, get Nick on here. Just give me one second, folks. Dr. Nick, can you hear me? I can, Dr. Dave. Nice to, nice to talk to you. All right. Well, thanks very much, uh, uh, Dr. Bear Patel, for joining us today. Um, I know that you've been using laser therapy for a while, and I know that most chiropractors focus on the treatment of neck and back pain. Um, would you be able to discuss uh, how Bioflex laser therapy has expanded your practice uh, with respect to perhaps new patients or patient volume and perhaps uh, treatment of non-spinal conditions? I would love to do that. As you said, I've been doing this for 10 years. Um, and w the reason why I got into it personally was uh, seeing the, the tsunami of uh, uh, the snowbirds coming through where they're so advanced in osteoarthritis that uh, manipulation was becoming contraindicated. And uh, I was starting to discharge patients to home exercise and medications. And the moment I introduced uh, BioFlex laser therapy, it, 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 it allowed me to keep those patients and keep them happy and functioning and uh, using a lot less medication and having greater quality of life. So the first thing is advanced OA. And as we know, everybody over 55 has OA. Uh, and this therapy can slow that process down dramatically. Right, I noticed that here in our clinic, um, probably 50% of what we treat here is advanced OA, whether that's spinal related or extremity related. Um, you know, this type of uh, therapy allows for a natural way of reducing that inflammation and repair uh, of some of that damaged tissue and allows you then to do other types of therapies as well too. Absolutely. Um, as a consequence, we uh, do a lot of soft tissue work and, and uh, we have a gym here, so we, we get them down and get them doing active exercise as well and, and, and it's, it's just a uh, and we have a health coach so all of these together make a major impact on the quality of life of these patients and, and uh, we, we had a discussion before uh, you and I Dr. David about uh, disc herniations and how there are so many people walking around with disc herniations and uh, can, I, can I extrapolate a little further? No, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, and the thing, the thing with disc herniations, and, and please do, is that um, we, we know that, uh, you know, there are times where there might be contraindications for treating acute disc herniation, and we know that, uh, you know, this is a definitely a, 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 an area where chiropractors specifically see a lot of these types of patients. But please go ahead. 
Well, I, I was at a, uh, the OCA conference where Dr. Mark Irwin, who is uh, doing a lot of research in disc, disc pathology, um, re, reintroduced me to the, uh, I was mistaken in, in understanding the frequency of disc herniations, and he reminded me that actually the frequency is around 70%. And then when I went through his research, uh, uh, it became even more startling, uh, neck, as you're talking about neck problems, uh, there's a Japanese study that says that as we age, over 60 years of age, uh, it's an 84% rate of disc herniations in the cervical spine. Uh, it makes me a little bit more cautious in, in just aggressively adjusting my elder population and, and using more uh, uh, non-invasive light therapy to help these patients out of their radiculopathies, out of their headaches. And, and we found with the protocols that you've, you've set up for us, that within six visits, these patients are feeling much better. So uh, disc herniations, where he's telling us that really with an, an aggressive disc herniation, you should just have the patient come in and, and talk to them and do nothing chiropractically. Well, we can get in there right away and start doing the laser therapy and have fantastic results very quickly without uh, and reducing downside risk, uh, adverse events risks. Uh, and he was talking about the fact that chiropractors now, there are five lawsuits going on in, in the courts on chiropractors adjusting discs and aggravating conditions. So this therapy definitely improves our clinical effectiveness and reduces, our, reduces the patient's chances of having adverse events occur. Yeah, I think that's really important too. I mean, when you're talking about contraindications, whether that's uh, you know advanced rheumatoid arthritis in the cervical spine, um, or instability, or disc herniations, where um, you know uh, manipulation is you know you're you're going to perhaps uh, maybe shy away from that, uh, understandably so. But then, what are your what are your options using tens or IFC or or what have you? You can see where the mechanism of action of laser therapy how it directly um, affects the cells and the tissues for healing and accelerates that healing process and reduces that inflammation. It's a it's obviously a natural fit to be able to help your patient in a non-invasive way where you're not posing a potential risk to your patient. Absolutely, but I can I can I can elaborate further. I, I I'm I'm one of the first uh, group of chiropractors coming out of CMCC with an acupuncture uh, certification, and I've used a lot of electroacupuncture, and I found it quite effective until I started using low-level laser therapy, and 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 the difference is dramatic in in terms of the effectiveness of laser. So once again, it, my clinical experience is in line with the research that you you've been presenting in terms of, of, of laser's effectiveness in relationship to electrotherapies and even acupuncture. This is leagues better. Um, one of the things that I'm doing is, uh, you were talking about instability, I'm doing a lot of uh, PDA challenges on lumbar spines and I'm finding uh, a rate of at least 20 to 25 percent of my patients showing up with significant um, uh, lumbar instabilities. and, and uh, my position has been that I, I don't do a lot of rotary adjustments on patients over 40, 45 years of age in the lumbar spine, mostly because of the work of Dr. Kirkcaldy Willis showing the degenerative process in the lumbar spine uh, being significantly a uh, higher percentage of patients over 40 having degenerative changes. So I've been doing long axis traction adjustments on, on those patients and having a significant number of those patients having an adverse event of increased pain. And then we've been backtracking and doing some P to A challenges with uh, uh, the patients uh, having an apprehensive uh, uh, response. And lasers, once again, have allowed me to go back and fix that instability or stabilize it as much as possible and, and uh, get a fantastic result for the patient with, once again, reduced adverse events. Yeah, that's very true. I was wondering if you could also comment on the impact of laser therapy that's it's had on your bottom line, specifically um, perhaps maybe how you approach billing for laser therapy um, and uh, perhaps how it's uh, increased uh, your gross revenue. So on the business end, it's been a fantastic addition. Um, uh, what, uh, so a description of what we have is we have uh, 12 laser units from BioFlex. So I have a Erconia laser and I have a Physioline laser. The other two, the last two I don't use very much, but I, I use uh, the laser, uh, the Bioflex lasers regularly. And uh, currently, we're on average seeing about 100 patient visits a week. I have two laser techs that work for me, so I, I, uh, my job is to diagnose the problem, and I have two other chiropractors who work in our office, so they diagnose the problem, 
and then give a plan of care to the patient. So it's anywhere from six to 12 visits for care. And uh, the patient is told that this, this can be part of their, their, their benefits plan or, or out of pocket. And they're, it's explained to them very clearly with a nice model that they're able to uh, understand. And we have a high rate of compliance as a consequence. And 100 patient visits added with laser is, is great. But even better is when the patient comes back for their maintenance care and is having great results. So on both ends, both financially and, and, uh, and clinically, we're having great results using the therapy. Right. I mean, um, just so those of you who are listening, I mean, we have chiropractors listening in and, and physiotherapists and massage therapists. In nearly every jurisdiction, um, laser therapy or low-level laser therapy um, can actually be part of your scope of practice. There's a few exceptions. I know in, in British Columbia for massage therapists, um, they're not allowed to do any, uh, any sort of electrotherapy or, or laser therapy uh, treatments, but um, in all, other jurisdictions, um, um, you can actually use laser therapy. So it's no different than doing another type of technique, whether that's shockwave or ultrasound or what have you. Um, so it is within your scope to, uh, to do that as well, too. Um, now, Dr., uh, Dr. Nick, I know laser therapy is really known to have really no side effects and can be safely integrated into a rehab practice. Can you comment on the impact of laser therapy um, that's had on your clinical practice since you've actually integrated this technology? Well, first of all, just back to the last thing, I just want to finish. One of the things that we ran into in benefits programs is that we had to call, we didn't call it laser therapy in our building. We called it chiropractic adjunctive. And the moment we called it that, uh, it got covered by benefits plans. Just a little, little, little uh, trick, uh, hint that we learned. As to uh, how, how, what it's done, as, as, you, as you mentioned earlier, the, uh, when you have a, an aggressively uh, a patient in, in significant amounts of pain, um, it has tremendous benefit in reducing pain and, and inflammation dramatically, swelling in knee joints and hip joints very rapidly. Uh, things that you could never really manage with manipulative, even soft tissue manipulation, we can do with our lasers. Um, and, and it brings in a whole group of patients who, as I said before, would, would have not considered chiropractic. Uh, it, 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 expands your scope of, of care to people coming in for, in my office I see people with fractures, pelvic fractures, fibular, collarbone, uh, we, we do a lot of post-surgical scar therapy, we're doing concussions and, and uh, you and I, Dr. David, had a, had a discussion. We, we've been able to recover people's lives by getting them back to work and able to function post-concussion. Tremendous results, and we're talking 12, 15 visits, and these people are living life again. And there's one, I, as Dr. Chow said, you know, uh, anecdotal evidence is is not great, but that's all I have right now. And I have a young gentleman who came to me two years post concussion. He spent a year in his basement because of his migraine headaches. He's lost the ability to do math. Uh, he had been to numerous practitioners, medical and and uh, chiropractic and massage. I tried cranial manipulation to no benefit. And finally, I had come down to a conference and learned about the, the new wave of research coming out on uh, concussion on post-Iraq war vets. And, and I offered the care to him free of charge and, and for six visits. And the results were so good in six, we did another uh, eight or nine. And now the young man works on a high hole. And if anybody knows what a high hole is, it's, it's a machine designed to give you whiplash and he doesn't get headaches. So the, the results were fantastic. So yeah. you're doing many things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, we're just uh, running out of time now, but um, uh, that's one of the, you know, one of the things with laser therapy is that um, there's more and more indications that are uh, uh, cropping up. Um, the research will uh, eventually be out there, um, certainly for concussions, that kind of thing. We're starting to see some human trials and some research entering, um, you know, into the field. And with that, uh, as Roberta Chow can attest to, um, that as that's accumulated, uh, then we'll have that evidence to be able to, um, you know, to put out guidelines, that kind of thing, that would include laser therapy for those uh, types of conditions. Uh, Dr. Nick, I want to thank you very much for joining us uh, today. It was really insightful as far as how you've integrated laser therapy and the kind of results that you've had. And certainly, I think it fits well with what I was trying to get across today uh, in that, um, you know, some of the reasons why you should be looking at, if you don't use low-level laser therapy, why you should be looking at adding that to your clinical practice. Obviously, 
for clinical efficacy, but also for uh, other reasons uh, as a business person, uh, you know, for increasing revenue and patient volume and so forth. So uh, once again, thank you very much, Dr. Neck. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me on. Take care. Okay, so we've uh, pretty much come to the end of the webinar. I want to thank everyone for, uh, for listening in. And um, I just want to remind everyone uh, to go to our website. Um, we do host uh, laser certification training uh, every month. It's a two-day certification training here in Toronto. Uh, we'll be releasing remote dates uh, to other cities around North America over the next week or two. Um, so if you're not in the Toronto area, you can either uh, come to us and, uh, and look at, uh, and see, perhaps get in a Raptors game and uh, avoid the Leafs if you can, um, or uh, visit, us, uh, visit us at one of the um, uh, cities that we'll be coming to soon. And uh, once again, if you wanted to uh, email me directly, uh, my email is here, david at bioflexlaser.com. And what I'd like to do right now is if you have some questions, I will try and address those right now. I'm um, just going to try to uh, see if I can get to those uh, right now. Okay, so let's just take a look at a few of these questions, if you're still listening in. Um, so I have one question here from Samantha. Um, what is a term you find most successful for using in marketing and advertising efforts? And um, you know, at our clinic here, we don't actually do a lot of uh, specific marketing uh, and advertising for laser therapy. We, uh, most of the referrals are coming from in-house, from uh, the patients themselves, and also from um, uh, from uh, doctors and other physicians. But as far as our clinicians go that use our equipment, um, there's many ways of, of doing that. Um, you have to educate, first of all, you educate all your, your employees um, and your, your staff that work with you, um, but also you have to uh, educate your patients. And uh, by hosting, um, you know, uh, monthly talks on laser therapy, by going out in the field, talking to clinicians and physicians in the area so that understandable laser therapy can refer for that, that kind of thing is also successful. A big part of what we do is um, is practice management and our training. Um, so we also talk a lot about how to improve um, and get that laser therapy practice uh, going. Um, I have a question here from Marianne with respect to lymphedema. And the question is, is how permanent is the res resolution of lymphedema and how frequent might retreatment be needed on average? Um, the thing with lymphedema is you'll see dramatic effects with, with treatment of laser therapy fairly quickly. That's because of the uh, ability for the um, release of nitric oxide in the blood that causes vasodilation of lymphatics. So you will see a fairly rapid reduction of that lymphedema. Um, the, the patients do require ongoing uh, care or treatment, depending on the cause or the etiology of the lymphedema. Um, there's actually quite a few research papers out on um, uh, lymphedema secondary to post mastectomy. Um, so it's interesting. If you want to see that research, please email me and I'll send that out to you. Um, but um, as far as what we, uh, as far as sort of how long we treat, that type of thing, it varies from case to case. And I'm just looking at some other questions here. Uh, a question from Elise. Uh, you mentioned that the dosage is very important. How do you know what dosage to use? Um, well, that's a really good question. Um, what we've done here, now Dr. Khan has been using, uh, has designed this equipment and has been using it for over 20 years. We actually do ongoing clinical trials with our patients to adjust the dosage accordingly. So we'll treat uh, hundreds of cases of Achilles tendinopathies and uh, lower back issues and, you know, elbow tendinopathies.